Hello, my name is Philip Song. I'm a pastor of Good News Manhattan Church and also IYF director in New York City. For a few days, you have been listening how to solve youth problem. Right, there are many youth problems. But in order to change them, we need to change their internal world first. So, we need to change their mind. Today, I want to tell you why we need to change their mind. And then we have very good education called mind education. And I want to tell you how to utilize this mind education in your ministry, in your church, and in your community. Few years ago, one student asked a teacher in Kenya, Teacher, I wanted to, I want to watch a soccer match. And teacher said, No, you cannot watch it during a class. Teacher, please, I want to watch it. And teacher said, No, you can't do it during a class. And the student, he was enraged and he left from school. That night, he came back to school and he set fire on a building. And the school was burning in the evening. And many students, they came back to school and they took a picture and they put that picture on SNS. And do you know what happened? Since June until July 26, roughly 120 schools are burnt by pupil, by student. And many of them asked them, why did you do that? And they said, I don't know why I did it. Many of them, they did it without reason. Everyone, many youth, they are doing many bad things without reason and without thinking deeply. If they were able to think one more time, they wouldn't have done it. If I burn this school, then where we are going to study? And how can we get education? If they are able to think one more time deeply, they wouldn't have done it. But they couldn't think deeply. Pastor Oksu Park, the founder of CLF and founder of IYF, he said, the real problem, the real youth problem is their inability to think deeply in the midst of the difficulties. Everyone, real youth problem is not drug and alcoholic or bullying. But real youth problem is their inability to think deeply in the midst of the difficulties. They cannot think deeply. Many youth, they cannot think deeply. That's why they would have done it. Few years ago, in Bronx, one student, he stabbed a friend in a class. And then, few years ago, few blocks away from my church, one female student, 11 years old, one female student jumped out from the building and committed suicide. You know, when I heard this news, I was really, really difficult because it happened few blocks away from my church. And then, you know, I couldn't help her, right? I didn't know who she is, but I, if I knew it, I probably went to her and then I wanted to tell her many things. But she committed suicide. She was 11 years old. Everyone, this is reality. Many students and many people wanted to be happy. I want to be happy. 
I want to have happiness. But, you know, they cannot be happy. I want to free from depression. But I have been failed. I want to be happy but failed. I try to overcome drug. But I have been failed. I escaped from isolation. But I have failed. They have been trying it. And they want to overcome it. But do you know? They don't know how to overcome it. They have been trying it, but they didn't know how to overcome it. And problem is, not many people in the world and in our society are teaching them how to overcome those kind of situation. Many people said that, do it. Try hard. You know, Pastor Oxford Park, he had meeting with uh, one you know lady, and she said, "Pastor, my son hit his teacher." And then Pastor Oxo Park said, "No, your son did not hit hit, hit his teacher." And the lady said, "Pastor, I saw it. My son did hit his teacher." And Pastor Oxo Park said, "No." It was the evil spirit in your child that forced him to hit the teacher. The lady said that my son hit his teacher. Pastor Oxford Park said, no, that's not him. But evil spirit is in him forced him to hit his teacher. That's not him. He didn't want it. But evil spirit is forced him. To do it. Everyone, look at this. This is EKG monitor. You may see it in the, you know, hospital. Through the EKG monitor, we are able to see how health, how healthy his heart is, how healthy his heart is. But do you know, unfortunately, there is no machines that can measure how much he is suffering for problem in his heart. If we can make that machine, that could be very expensive because everybody wanted to know what kind of heart does he have or does she have or does my kids have. But nobody knows. Nobody knows about our heart. That's why many people say, do it good. Mom, I'm sad. Try hard. Harder. Try harder. And many people force their kids or student to do good. Many students and many kids wants to be good. But do you know, they don't know how to overcome evil spirit, how to overcome, you know, the, their temptations and ambitions. Look at this. This is Ontario, Canada, Ottawa, Piscat. There is First Nations. First Nations, they are Native Americans and they are living reservation. But look at this. September 2016, 100 people in Ottawa, Piscot attempted suicide. Their population is 2,000. But 100 people, they committed suicide in a month. And reason of death for a majority of First Nations citizens under 44 years old has been committing suicide. They are committing suicide not because they are dying not because of cancer. They are dying not because of you know car accident, but majority of young people they are dying because of committing suicide. So, me and several people, we went to First Nations reservation. So look at this. 
This is a airplane. With this airplane, we went to one First Nations reservation. So it was 2015, and uh, with some of pastors and you know, our youth, we went there together. So we visited their house one by one because we wanted to have a camp. So we invited people one by one, house by house. So we went to one house at noon. Knock, knock. We knocked the door. And then one student came out. It was at noon, but he just woke up. Oh, who is it? We are here from IYF, International Youth Fellowship. And we are having IYF camp. And it's very fun. Please come. Okay, I will think about it. And many of them, they are not even going to school. And they were sleeping at home. So we visited them one by one several times. And we invite them. At the beginning, they were not interested, but we provide them many activities. We provide them taekwondo and also dance performance and dance academy, and we give them mind lecture. Mind lecture is from the Bible. We start to explain to them mind education and heart of God. Everyone, think about Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15, there is a prodigal son. At the beginning, prodigal son, he thought that he is a good, you know, person. And he is able to do his business well. That's why he asked his dad, Dad, give me my portion. I'll go to abroad and I'll do my business. And I think I can do it well. His dad said, Son, you have to learn many things more. And all mine is yours. You don't need to go. But son said, Dad, anyway one day you are going to give me my asset. So give me my portion now. Let me go and let me begin my business. I can do it. Dad, I can do it. And dad you know, asked him several times not to go, but he really, really wanted to go. That's why he received his portion and he went to another country and he wanted to start his business. But do you know, Luke chapter 15, he wanted to begin his business well, but he was wasting his money with prodigal living. And then, you know, he was, you know, the, the, he was spending his money with harlot and with, you know, other things and he spent them all. Oh, I wanted to do my business well and I thought that I could do it well, but where's my money? I had a lot of money and I am able to begin my business. Where is my money right now? And he ended up losing everything. Everyone, think about it. If you lose everything, then what would you do? Right? We would come back to our dad. But he couldn't do that. He didn't want to go to this pitiful image. That's why he tried harder and harder. But great famine came into that land and there was nothing. He didn't have anything to eat. That's why he ended up going to one, you know, the owner of pig pen. And he said, you feed my swines and I will give you food. And he fed swines 
with pots in the pig pen. But he was so pitiful and pathetic. What am I doing right now? When I was with my father, I was happy, and all my father's is mine. But now I'm in, in pig pen, and I am dying with hunger. He closed his eyes, and his heart is going back to his dad. Right, when I was with my dad, my room was so warm. And when I open my refrigerator, there is food and snacks and soda. But when he opened his eyes, he was with pigs. Oing, 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 oing. His all clothes were dirty and filthy and smelly. What am I doing right now? And then he closed his eyes again. Right, my dad and mom, they cooked really delicious food every day. Every Saturday in the morning, my mom cooked, baked, cake. It was so delicious. But when he opened his eyes, he was with pigs. What am I doing? What am I doing? And he made up his mind. Okay, I'm not worthy to be called to your son. Dad, just accept me as a one of your hired servant. Let me tell him I'm your servant. And he made up his mind to go to his dad. But he was so scared. And he thought that, okay, my father may not accept me because I spent them all. And he may get angry. But let me ask him to accept me as one of his servant. While he was going to his dad's house, he was powerless. He didn't have any strength. He was walking to his dad. But his dad saw him and his dad ran to him and they hugged him and they kissed him and he started to order his command, command his servant. Put the ring on his hands. Put the sandals on his him. And change his robe of best. And then kill fatted calf. I got my son. I got my son back. Do you know? Son had a heart. Look at me as a one of hired servant. But his dad came to him and hugged him, kissed him. My son, you come back, my son. But do you know, son couldn't have said that. I am your hired servant. He couldn't have said that. Do you know why? Because big his father's love came to him. He knew his father's love, and he knew his father's heart. That's why he couldn't have said that. I am your hired servant. Because if he say that, he's going to step on his dad's love. He was speechless. He couldn't say that. I met many students. And then, Sometimes they came to my office. I met one lady. She was abused by her family. And then she didn't want to talk to me and she didn't want to share anything to me. And I said to her, I need your help. And she looked at me and she's, her eyes became very big. What? What did you say? I need your help. She say, Pastor, I never heard you know, that, you know, those kind of, uh, you know, the um, question. You said that you need my help? I say, yes. 
Why do you need my help? And I started to explain to her. When I was younger, I was troublemaker. I was alcoholic and I didn't have any hope. And many people call me troublemaker. That's why living as a troublemaker was not a problem at all because I was a troublemaker. And nobody tell me that. I will be the leader of next generation. But 2005, I met Pastor Oxapar. And I heard a message. He said that tomorrow about this time, you will become a leader of next generation. Do you know, I thought that it doesn't make sense. It's nonsense. But later on, he said that no, you will be the next generation. And then, that gave me so much hope. And now I became a leader, and I am able to embrace many alcoholic and many troublemakers because I was the same as them before. I need your help because you got hurt and you have you have wounded heart that's why you are able to embrace many people and many young people who have wounded heart as you that's why i need your help and you know her eyes getting bigger and bigger and she started to you know cry. And I said, but in order to, you know, help them, you need my help first. And I started to have fellowship with her. Not only her, but I started to have many, many youth. And they were changing little by little. One student, he wanted to become a tattooist and he wanted to be, you know, he fought a lot. He became missionary. And, you know, a student who, you know, stopped drug, he quit drug and then he started to live different life. And they are, they became a person who embrace Many people who has same problem. So, we gave them heart of God and also my lecture from the Bible. And many students is in this place, they changed as well. And they came to New York and LA and they attended our camp. Do you know, amazing thing is, many of them, they changed and they start to live different life. A Mackenzie, Tyler, and other student is in First Nations. They said that, I want to change them. I want to change youth is in our community. And they started to deliver this mind and good mind to youth and many uh, troublemakers in their community and church and their society. You know, mind education is from Bible. We explain to them how to change their heart. Everyone. Many people said that, you know, our youth, they are many pro they are having many problems. Problem of drug, problem of gun violence, and problem of alcoholic, problem of bullying, etc. But do you know? True problem is not their problem. But true problem is 
our youth leaders. Leaders who is leading youth, they are, they are not awakening. Their heart is not awakening. That's why they cannot lead our youth properly. Look at this. This is a pearl. This is a natural pearl. Do you know natural pearl was very expensive back then? But nowadays, pearl is not that expensive. Do you know why? Of course, natural pearl is very expensive, but there are many artificial pearls. And have you heard about the for pearl farm? Look at this. This is a pearl farm. And then they are making artificial pearl. So a person put irritant into a clam. And it bothers clam. And the clam make fluid. And the fluid caught the irritant. And, and then eventually it became a pearl. So, look at this. Yeah. This is the artificial, artificial pearl. Look at that. There are many per many uh, clams, right? Do you know? All clams has a pearl. Pearl, 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 pearl. Do you know? Our youth, they are not, uh, they are not troublemakers. If they have a proper mindset. If we are able to implement proper mindset into their heart, then they are not troublemakers anymore. But there are not many youth leaders who is implementing this proper mindset into their hearts. That's the problem. That's why I want to tell you, youth leaders must be changed. Youth leaders must be awakened. We have to awake ourselves first. All right, they are not problems. They are not troublemakers. If they have proper mindset. Ah, uh, he's troublemaker. No. He doesn't have proper mindset. Then what if he has proper mindset? He's the leader of next generation. Everyone. Think about troublemakers around you. Now, who is a troublemaker? Nobody. Because they can they can be a leader of next generation if they have proper mindset. And then you have to do it. You have to implement that proper mindset into their heart. We are having mind education program. So I want to introduce you to mind education. And if you like it, in the end, I'll give you a phone number and you can contact them. And we are going to have mind education workshop for your church and your ministry and your community. Let me tell you how to use this mind education. In New York City, there is a special education called mental health education. Since 2018, July, all schools in New York City has to implement mental health education. Do you know? Many educators try to solve youth problem and they have been try, have been changing environment, but it has not been working. That's why they knew that, ah, student has to change from internal world. That's why they has begun mental health education. Do you know how many schools is in New York? Yeah. 
1,400 schools is in New York City and 7,000 schools is in New York State. A lot of schools. And they want to know and they want to do this mental health education, but many of them doesn't know exactly. But our mind education is exactly same as mental health education. And then we, mind education is registered in DOE, New York Department of Education. And we are doing this mind education in different public schools. So in this school, we are doing mind education for the elementary school student. And this is one school is in Brooklyn and they are middle school, high school student. Yeah, this is school is in Bronx. And then next, uh, we are also doing this mind education for police and police explorers. Uh, there are many uh, problems in the world. And then actually our police, they are protecting us from crime and, and you know, many, you know, bad things. But unfortunately, these days, our police became our enemy. So, police, and then, you know, many, for, uh, many people is in police, leader of police, they wanted to have conversation with citizens. Problem is, they don't know how to communicate. That's why one day I went to, uh, the community affair bureau, in Manhattan and I gave them a lecture. The lecture title was How to Communicate. Uh, we don't have much time, that's why I'm not going to explain to you what I, you know, delivered. But uh, if I have a chance, I will give you the lecture as well. So I teach them how to communicate. And then I was invited to other uh, also the group and I also give them a lecture. And in police, uh, the, 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 there is a police explorer. So in the precinct, there is a program called, you know, police explorer. Do you know Boy Scout, right? Boy Scout, they made it and then student, they go to the precinct and they receive some training. But they don't know how to train it and they don't have much programs. So we also give them mind, mind education and, you know, they were able to have a proper mindset while they're learning mind education. And also look at this. This is Manhattan Detention Center. I went there and then I gave them lectures several times, but unfortunately because of COVID, pandemic, I cannot go inside anymore, but I gave them lecture several times. And this one is Crossroad Juvenile Detention Center. Uh, this is Juvenile Detention Center and I went there and then regularly I gave them my lecture. Everyone, probably in your community there are many uh, detention center and juvenile detention center as well. But through this mind lecture, we are able to change their mindset. I went to juvenile detention center. They are under 18, but this detention center is very, you know, the tough because majority of them, they came here for as a mother. But when I saw them, they were high school students. They are not different at all. But some evil, evil spirit is in them. Drag them to do something that they don't want to do. That's not them. We have to tell them 
What is dragging you right now? And that's not you. And if they are able to overcome that evil spirit with mind and they, with the word of God, they are no longer follow their thought, but they become a leader of next generation. They are able to embrace many troublemakers who are having same situation as them. And here, this is UN building. I met uh, the UN ambassador of Saint Lucia. And then I explained to him about youth problem and the how to change their mind. And then uh, UN uh, Saint Lucia ambassador asked me, two weeks later, the director of education of Saint Lucia come. Do you want to meet her? And I said, of course. So I met her in UN building and I gave her presentation. And she likes it. And she asked me, what do you want me to do? And I asked her two things. First, I want to meet a minister of youth of St. Lucia. Second, we want to implement this education for the youth is in your country. She said that there are many youth problems and youth problems has been increasing, it has been increasing continually. She said she wants to do it. And then she went back to St. Lucia and she gave him a report. And Minister of Youth called me and he invited me. And also director and then the, uh, the, the president of Good News Mission as well. So, uh, president of Good News Mission, he give them presentation about, you know, how to change our youth. Here, there are many people, right? They, among them, seven of them are ministers of governor, minister of youth and minister of finance and minister of education, minister of etc. And they listened and they said that we need it. We want you guys do this mind education in our country. So we made MOU. And we uh, are going to, we are going to work in that country after finish pandemic. And next picture is, actually the lady is in center. She is the Minister of Youth of St. Lu, uh, the Suriname. Also, we visit them and then, uh, the, the Minister of Youth said that she also want to implement this education for Suriname. So after we finish this pandemic, also we are going to begin this mine education for country. Next picture is, uh, this is uh, one facility for homeless shelter. It is, uh, I'm sorry, this is one facility of homeless shelter. But this homeless shelter is very special because it's for only young people. So I went there and I gave them a lecture. At the beginning, around 15 of them, they sat down, but they all lay down on the chair like this. Uh, and they didn't even look at me. I gave them lecture, but 15 of them, even one single person looked at me. It was very difficult. And I gave them around 40 minute lecture. And after finished lecture, one of them asked me, oh, is it real? And I said, yes. And next time, week later, I gave them another lecture. Three times, four times. And then this is the picture 
when I give them lecture fifth time. And then, you know, some of them, they are, they are, you know, playing with their phone, but they actively ask them, then how to change my heart? Then how to, how to change my mind? And then they were changing little by little, and staff members is in that facility was kind of stunned. And she want us to do it continually. So we had been doing it for, you know, continually. But unfortunately, because of COVID pandemic, we couldn't do it right now. But it was very, very graceful. You know, if you know how to change our youth mind and all our youth, they are not troublemaker anymore. If you have a tool, then you can use it. But if you don't have any tools, then use this mind education. Through CLF, we want to, we want all of you and all leaders use this mind education and change your church and your ministry and your youth and your community. As I say, we have mind education for family and youth and in school program and then program for our um, detention centers and juvenile detention centers and also homeless shelter and many different uh, area as well. We want to, we want you guys use this education as yours. I explained to you this is mind education, but this all coming from Bible. And then from the principle of Bible, we are explained to them about world of heart. If you teach them how to stop it and how to overcome it, their life going to change. If one student change, they are able to embrace many students and they are going to change. And they are going to embrace another student and they are going to change. And another people are going to change. And they all become a leader of next generation. Everyone. There is no troublemaker. But there is a troublemaker. Not our youth but youth leaders. So, this is the phone number. If you want to get mind education training, please call or text James Kai 1904-646-7885. Call or text him, and then we are able to give you uh, mind education for your church or your community. Of course, you are able to learn it regularly and then you can use it for your community. And also there is youth organization. Christian Youth Organization, SIA. If your youth get involved with this association, they are able to learn many young leaders good mind and you are able to implement that mind and mindset in your youth and in your church as well so please call or text Drell Jones 1631742-6953 please call or text them and then they are going to give you an uh, answer and that you are able to do many things in your church, community, and society. Thank you very much. And then I hope that um, you can awake your heart and then you are able to begin to change your youth in your church and community. Thank you very much. Uh, not only that addiction, but you know, all addiction is 
same. Uh, people got addicted because they are following their desires and uh, the ambitions. And once they do it, and it's easier, you know, it's, it can do it, you know, second time. Easy, second time is easier than first time. And third time is easier than second time. And they kept on doing it and they got addicted. But many people said that try not to do it and try to stop it, but that's not working. Because they don't want it, but actually their heart is, you know, they like it and their, you know, heart already, you know, got addicted by that. So do it or don't do it is not working. But in order to overcome addiction or in order to overcome temptations, you need new strength in your heart. Uh, for example, there is one lady, uh, her name is Mackenzie, and then she was one of students in First Nations. And she, uh, you know, had been addicted by, you know, other many things. And also she uh, was living very lazy life. She wanted to change herself, but it was very difficult for her to change. But later on, while she was listening to my lecture, she realized one thing. I thought that the voice that I am hearing is my voice. And desires and temptations, I thought that that's mine. But she realized one thing that uh, this is not mine, but evil spirit. While she was listening, she realized that this is evil spirit. And, you know, she, she, you know, sometimes she wanted to commit suicide. One day, she had a heart that she wanted to commit suicide. But after she listened to my lecture, right away she realized that this is not me but evil spirit. Ah, uh, evil spirit is dragging me to do it. And she was able to overcome it right away. You know, if they are able to know that the desires and temptations is in them is not their voice, but evil spirit, then they are able to overcome it. And same time, also, they need to get strength. Without strength in their heart, they cannot overcome their addiction. So they have to know that that is not them, but evil spirit. And same time, they have to get strength in their heart. Bible always gives us strength. The, the Jesus Christ met woman who caught in adultery. He didn't say that go and you know do not commit adultery. But Jesus Christ became her owner, and Jesus Christ became her husband, and from that moment. Jesus Christ started to protect her. That's why it is not difficult for her to overcome it as long as Jesus Christ gets along with her. As long as Jesus Christ is with us, we are able to overcome it. And, you know, that's not difficult. But many people, they try to overcome it by themselves. I should not do that. I shouldn't have done it. And they try not to do it by themselves. By themselves, it is very difficult. So in order to overcome it, they need a new strength. New strength from Jesus. And new strength from their family and you know, their friend. If new th strength came from that came into their heart, they are able to overcome it. Um, actually, many people, they think that the gospel and the word of God they are knowing is the truth. If they, as long as they, you know, um, think that what I'm knowing is the truth, they don't want to change it. 
I know I know Bible properly, and the knowledge that I having is right, and they don't need to change. But when you preach the proper gospel, they get to reflect themselves. Oh, I thought that word of God. I thought that the thought that I have was right, but according to what you are preaching. And according to the fellowship that you are having given, that you have been giving me, oh, you are right. If they realize that they are wrong, they are able to put down their thought and their knowledge and their, uh, you know, previous fixed thought. So, uh, you know, uh, you do better explain to them true gospel, and they are able to. Get to understand that what they're having is wrong. In in you know the uh, if you look at the you know genuine you know the for example genuine you know the jewelry continually six months when somebody give you fake you can get to know that this is fake because you have been knowing that that is you have been. Watching the genuine, uh, the you know, jewelry. So, if someone has been watching, you know, the fake jewelry continually, when they when you show them this is the genuine, and they can realize that oh, I thought that mine is real, but ah, uh, mine is fake, and your one is the truth, and your one is genuine. And they are able to put down, you know, their their knowledge or their previous fixed mindset and fixed thought. So don't try to teach them, but tell them the truth, and truth will make them make truth will set them free from their thought. I have been. Uh, having fellowship in in detention center and juvenile detention center several times, uh, but unfortunately, uh, I I have done it three four times only. After then, uh, COVID pandemic has begun. Uh, I couldn't do it much, but as but you know I have spoken with the director. I have talked with director is in detention center, and then the director said that he is very satisfied because their uh, attitude has been changed a lot, and then uh, also they uh, keep on doing it. But now because of COVID, I couldn't do it uh, right now. But after finish pandemic, we are going to begin again.